YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a review, a little bit late, of the new Meet Me at the Altar album. So Meet Me at the Altar are a alternative rock group band. They make anything in the realm of easy core, pop punk, pop rock, like anything in that realm, they make it and it's really good. Um, so they just put out their first debut album called Past, Present, Future. And it's good. It's really good for their first debut album. It's a lot of pop rock. It has some pop punk in it. It's got very much, um, it's very much 2000s vibes, like very, very nostalgic. If you listen to like pop rock or pop punk in the 2000s, this album is very, very much nostalgic in that way. A lot of the subject matter on the album talks a lot about like relationships, talks about like friendships, talks about like self-esteem, um, talks about like depression, like all different type of subjects are on this album. And I think for a beginner band, Mimi at the Altar are a band that got signed in 2020 during the pandemic to Fueled by Ramen and have been working on their debut album. Since then, they put out an EP um, in 2020, or 2020 or 2021. And a lot of those records were really great. And um, if you've been following along on this YouTube channel, you know I went to go and see them back in the beginning of March. They came to DC, so I went to go to their show and I got a t-shirt from them, which is the most comfortable thing in the world. I love this t-shirt. So good. It has their tour dates on the back. It's so dope. I love this shirt. I love wearing it. It's so comfortable. And yeah, we just, we love the band. They're a all female, black, people of color, queer members band. And we love that for them. And we love the band. Um, and yeah, so I figured I would, after giving this a lot of listens, um, the album actually came out back on March 10th. And so I figured I listened to this album enough. I've listened to it almost every day. And so here are just my thoughts on the album. So like I said, overall, the album is basically about relationships, friendships, uh, crushes, um, you know, like uh, self-esteem and depression and like different subject matter like that. Um, a lot of the influences are pop punk or pop rock. Um, this band is very influenced by what I call Disney core, um, which is like the pipeline from Disney Channel music and artists to like traditional like rock, pop rock, pop punk artists. So like they're influenced by traditional like pop punk, pop rock artists like um, like uh, Paramore, Fall Out Boy, Avril Lavigne, like artists like that. And then they're influenced also by like Disney core artists like Demi Lovato or the Jonas Brothers. And um, yeah, it's, it's really good. It's really, really good. Um, for their first album, it's a really cute album. It's fun. It's, it's a beat. It's got a lot of heart to it. And I think that they're just going to get better and better over time. And um, I already talked about their live show, but their live show, 10 out of 10, would recommend. They're actually going on a second headlining tour starting soon. Um, and so I, if you haven't gone and see them yet, please go see them if you're into the pop rock or pop punk genre and you want to go and support more like diversity in the scene, I highly recommend going check them out. Uh, at my uh, tour date, um, I was in the crowd. 
I'm short. You probably can't tell on camera, but I'm short. I'm only 4'9". And so at all shows I've ever been to, I've always been so short that I could barely see anything, right? And so I was behind this couple and they saw that I was behind there trying to like see the show. And so the woman in the couple, she was like, you want to come stand next to me so you can see better? And so I went to go and stand next to her and she was really super sweet. And like everybody at that show was like so, so nice. And like one of the um, people, a person who follows me on TikTok actually came and saw me at the show and said hello. And it was really, really sweet and awesome. So I highly recommend going and checking them out on tour. Um, they do covers of different songs as well. Like they do um, Take Me Away by Christina Vidal from the Freaky Friday soundtrack. They do um, Complicated by Avril Lavigne. And they do You Ought to Know by Alanis Morissette, which is dope. And then they do a bunch of their own songs. So I go, I would highly recommend going and checking them out on tour if you want to. And also checking out this album, Past, Present, Future. So the first two songs off of this album that were singles were Say It To My Face and Cool. And so Say It To My Face is a very like in your face no pun intended, in your face kind of like punchy song about basically haters and online comments. And I love it. I love it so much. It's probably their best song on the whole album. Um, I love that song. It's just very in your face. It's very punchy. And I love Edith, who is the lead singer of the band. I love her vocals on this song. Specifically during the bridge. The bridge, her vocals just go crazy. I love it. It's so, so good. Um, and I like the music video as well. It's basically them in on, in a computer screen, right? And they're at this like old guy's house, but he still lives with his mom. You know those old people who like still live with their mom. Not old, old, but like 30s or 40s and they still live at home and live in their mom's basement and they don't have any prospects for life and then they're online basically bashing bands because they don't like them or whatever that kind of guy and then they're on the computer screen and he's just like bashing them on the comments but then eventually they end up going to his house and they just like cream him and it's so so funny and so great I love it it gives that very like pop punk edge to the band and I just love it Plus, I love the way Edith, who I said is the lead singer of the band, I love the way she dresses. She dresses so very like 2000s, not even really like pop punk in a way, more like metalcore or like, um, or like new metal esque. Like, but she just gives alternative black girl in all of its glory, and I just love her. and. If I had been, if I was a teenager right now and they had been a band back when I was a teenager, like in 2005 or 2006, oh, I would have looked up to her so, so hardcore. And I would have tried to dress like her heavy. Like I would have tried to be like her 100%. So yeah, but I love, love, love that song. Um, yeah, and there's also this line about them being an industry plant because apparently people think that they are because they're an all-female uh, black and people of color with queer members banned and that's just too much for some people so they get called an industry plant and that's like the very first line of the song um say it to my face 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 i love it i love it so good i highly recommend that song um because it's one of the best songs on the whole album the next song that was a single um, on this album uh, was Cool, and I love that song. Now, some people might think it's a little annoying just because of uh, this part that goes, You're so cool, yeah you are, yeah you are, yeah you are, yeah, but I like that part. The song is basically about having like a crush on somebody and just wanting to spend all your time with them and just thinking that they're like the coolest person in the world. 
And I know a lot of teenagers specifically when you're like at that age where you're like infatuated or like have a crush on somebody and they're like everything to you and you just want to be in their orbit. And like it doesn't even have to be like somebody from school or somebody that you know in real life. It could be like a celebrity because like the video is very much reminiscent of like a 2000s era. So it has like the pink um, blow up chair, which I love those things. And it has like a bunch of like magazine posters on her wall of like all these guys and whatever. And it's just very 2000s. She's like reading one of those like teen magazines. So 2000s, so 90s, so great. And I just love it. I love it. I love the song. I love what the song gives out. It very much gives like, you know, your first little crush that you have on like a celebrity or like in real life and you're just like really infatuated with them and you're just like imagining you and that person together and like what you guys are going to do and how he's going to treat you right and how you're going to go to dinner together and spend time together and how they're just the coolest person in the world. Like I think it's really, really sweet and cute and I just love it so much. It's such a good song. And I recommend checking that one out too. Those are the two singles from the album and probably the best two songs on the whole album. But I love a lot of a lot more of the songs on the album. So stay tuned. Okay, so some of my favorite songs off of this album are TMI, A Few Tomorrows, Thanks for Nothing, Rocket Science, and King of Everything. I love all of those songs. So TMI is a song about self-esteem. So basically, it's a song, and I'll put a little clip of what Edith explained the song to be about that she talked about um, at my concert. Since this one is so honest, it's even scarier, but I think it's gonna help a lot of people with mental health. And but basically it's a song about self-esteem about self-worth and about loving yourself and about having insecurities and you know, not always thinking you're like the best and going through hard times and being depressed and all of those types of things and things that people just go through. You know what I mean? Lord, have I gone through it and just continue to go through it all the time. But, you know, it's a part of life. You go through those things and, um, you know, it's basically about explaining to the world because if you've listened to a lot of Meet Me at the Altar music, you would know that specifically in their EP that while they do talk about mental health and like depression and stuff like that, they talk about it from a lot more of a um, like not happy, but like not like da downtrodden type of way. I don't know how to explain it, but basically in this song, it's like taking the mask off and really being vulnerable about like how they feel in real life about themselves and about their, you know, their self-worth and things like that. And the video for this song is basically, and this is the third single from the album. And so the video is basically Edith, the lead singer, basically sitting and singing the song. And while she's doing that, they have one you know version of her where she's all dolled up and with her makeup and everything and then another one where she's taking her makeup off to be vulnerable because it's called tmi and so i really like that song i think it's a really great song i think it's going to help a lot of people and i think it's a very vulnerable song and i think that they really crafted the song well and just it's going to help you know teenagers and kids and you know People just get through life, you know, because life is hard and, you know, we could always, you know, know that there are people that may look up to that are also going through these hard times as well. So, yeah, I really like that song a lot. The next song that I like a lot is A Few Tomorrows. And A Few Tomorrows is really giving off the script. Um, if you don't know who the script is, it was like a pop rock 
band that was sort of big. They had like a big song. What am I supposed to do if I don't me only you? I'm falling to pieces. Yeah. Like they were had that single um back in the like mid late 2000s. Tia, who is the guitarist of the group, she talked about being really into the script back when she was younger and first learning how to play the guitar. And so this song is based around that and it has very much a script-esque feel and even down to the chords and everything. And it's a good song. It's basically about uh, wanting to have a few more tomorrows. Like, you know, if we could, could we have a few more tomorrows? You know what I mean? And I like that song and I like that her influences are in that pop rock lane. Cause I feel like specifically now, like if you're like considered a pop punk kind of outfit, there's no room for you to really go back and do anything that has to do with like pop rock or to say that you're influenced by that kind of music. And I think that people are losing out a lot. Why not explaining that they're into a more pop rock vibe? Because let's be honest, I love pop punk all day, but I was really into pop rock back in the day. Like for real, for real. Like like before Maroon 5 became terrible, I was in love. Okay, I love their first album. I even love their second album. The third album was cute, but I mean, not their best. And then it just went downhill from there. But I mean, I was into pop rock, okay? Kelly Clarkson, yes, okay? The pop rock was giving. So um, I'm just glad that they're able to say like, you know, we might be this pop punk outfit, but we also have pop rock influences and Disney core and we're gonna use those on our tracks. So I love that for them. So the next song that I really like is Thanks For Nothing, which is basically a relationship song. And it's basically about how, you know, you didn't know what you had and now we're over and you know, you don't really care. And it's sad that you don't care that now we're over and you didn't know that you had it great when we were together. And I like this song too, cause it also gives off a very like pop rock vibe to it as well. Um, and I, I, again, I just like the pop rock influences on this album because again, I just don't think that we always have to be so like pop punk, more like trying to be heavy on our records because I feel like pop rock is just as cool as pop punk. And we all did not listen to pop punk all the time. Like we also listen to pop rock. So I like the influence of pop rock on this album. And I like the lyrics of this song. Because like I said, it's about a relationship gone wrong. And the person didn't really care. And now it's over. And they're like, well, I didn't know what I had. And now it's over. And I can't get it back. And so, yeah. I just think this one is great. I think I've listened to this one um, the most out of all the other ones, minus the singles. So, yeah. The next one that I love so much, it's probably up there with the singles, is Rocket Science. Rocket Science is basically a song about literally like rocket science. Like things are not as hard as they seem. Some things are just rocket science. It's not that hard. It's not that difficult like some people try to make things seem so different so difficult so extra and in reality it's just rocket science like it's just the most simple thing like you don't have to really put a lot of effort in to figure it out it's just literally rocket science and i just like the chorus it isn't rocket science do, 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 do. i like it a lot i like that um and yeah again another pop rock with a little twinge of pop punk um vibe to it and um again I just like the lyrics I think that what they did with the song is really dope I like the instrumentation a lot um one thing I'm gonna say a lot throughout this review is that I like Edith's voice on all of these tracks a lot I think that she really works with her voice well and I think she's a really dope singer 
Next is the King of Everything, another pop rock with a twinge of pop punk infused song. Um, great song, so last song on the album. Great, great, great song. One of my favorites, probably listen to it the most. Like, probably uh, Say It To My Face, Cool, Rocket Science, King of Everything, and Thanks For Nothing probably and maybe it's over for me are probably the songs I listen to the most off of this record um because they're just the thing about me is like I've been wanting to listen to like more uh I guess pop rock pop punk whatever but I've been wanting to listen to more like happy music right and so for this album like even though you know some of the lyrics might be a little downtrodden a little bit. For the most part, they are pretty, like, not happy happy, but, like, just, like, not so, like, depressing. And that makes me happy. And listening to this album, you know, I'm able to, not only through the instrumentation being more happy and being more, like, fun and carefree and reminding me of, like, summer, um, the lyrics aren't that bad either, and so I like it. And so um, I'm just happy that more, you know, happy, upbeat music is being made out here because we need it. There's a lot going on and it's just nice to have happy music that's not so downtrodden all the time. And I just love listening to it. So King of Everything, that's a good song. And yeah. Now I love every song on this album. I've listened to every single song on this album continually since it was put out back on March 10th but I won't say that same language is my favorite favorite song off this album but I do like it because like I said I like every song off this album but I won't say it's like my ultimate favorite song but I do like try a little bit more than same language um and I think it's a great song and um yeah but I mean both of those songs are not my ultimate favorites but I do like them a lot and I've been listening to this entire album since it came out back in March 10th and I think it's just it's just a great body of work specifically for a band that hasn't been together that long but really put a lot of their influences onto this record right you can hear the Demi Lovato rec influences you can hear the Jonas Brothers influences you can hear the pop rock influences on this album and I just like that they really hone into that you know they do the pop punk thing but then they also do the pop rock thing and they do their Disney core roots and it's just it's a good record if you just want to have some chill not too busy just the right amount of like pop rock with pop punk tendencies album and you want to support women you want to support people of color black people you want to support queer people and you just want to listen to a cool band that is just getting their feet wet in the industry and just doing their thing and they're signed to Fueled by Ramen and you know a lot of great bands have come out of Fueled by Ramen like Paramore and Fall Out Boy and Jim Cuts Heroes and all these different bands and if you want to listen and just give them some support because they're pretty much a startup band and they haven't really like fully broken through but people know them on the internet and I think they're just they're super nice they're super great they're super fun they're just having a blast and it's just it's great to see women in rock music specifically black women people of color queer women just living their best life doing what makes them happy and having all the fun in the world because they deserve it so if i had to rate this album sincerely i would probably give it like a b plus a b plus i thought it was really good for their debut um it's really fun and it's a lot of like upbeat music um and yeah i just think it's a fun fun little record and if you want to check it out, check it out. And like I said, if you want to go see Meet Me at the Altar on tour, I would recommend it. It's really, really a fun time. And their music is really fun to see played live. 
and the covers they do are a lot of fun too and they're just their little woody banter is cute and they're just a lot of fun and you know I didn't know this but I learned this after I went to their show and I was like oh I didn't know that but I was late to the concert anyways a little bit so it didn't matter I didn't miss them but I missed like one of their openers and then I didn't get to see that so then I only saw the second opener which was fine and then I got to see them so it was fine but I didn't know this but they do this at their shows basically if you're there like super 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 early to their shows um, like I think they said like the first like 20 people in line get to do like this VIP thing with them and they're just like get to hang out with them and see them do like sound check and stuff and like just get to talk with the band and stuff like that. So yeah, I would highly recommend you going and checking them out. Go to their, uh, go to one of their tour dates, go check them out. They're on uh, Instagram, TikTok, all the places you can go check out and see where they're playing. And, um, yeah, just go check them out, support great music support women in music, support black people in music, support people of color in music, support queer people in music, and just go have fun with a good group of musicians, good group of girls, and just go have fun because they're just a lot of fun to listen to. So this was my review of the new-ish Meet Me at the Altar album, Past, Present, Future. Go check them out. All right, till next time. Peace.